All right, now let's talk about gearing ratios. Now, we discussed briefly that gearing essentially measures the ability of a firm to pay its long-term obligation. So what we're looking at for gearing is that what amount of the company was financed by equity, which is ordinary shares, and what amount of company was financed by debt. So gearing essentially measures the relationship between fixed cost capital, which is your debt, the capital that requires a fixed cost in terms of interest payment or even dividend payment. So when we talk about debt, what we're referring to debt over here is your non-current liabilities and preference shares. That's the debt that a company can have. Non-current liability will include loans, debentures, etc. Whereas preference share will also fall in this category because preference share has a fixed cost capital. There is a fixed dividend associated with preference shares. And equity purely refers to your ordinary share capital. Right, so these are the essential owners and this is your fixed cost capital. So we can think of it like this. A company can finance itself or raise money by either issuing equity, that's ordinary share capital. When you buy this, you become the real owners of the company and non-current liability and preference share is your fixed cost capital, another source to raise financing. So gearing is measuring the proportion of equity the company has and the proportion of debt the company has. This is also a measure of financial risk for ordinary shareholders. So if a greater proportion of the company is financed by fixed cost capital, that is concerning for ordinary share capital. Why is that? Because we know that these financiers would require a fixed cost in the form of interest payments and dividend. And also this money has to be repaid, which would require a significant outflow for the firm sometime in the future, whereas ordinary shareholders do not require any repayment. So from the point of view of an ordinary shareholder, this capital measures the financial risk the company has and will also impact the return for ordinary shareholders. Now, how do we measure gearing? So if we talk about gearing, let's first learn how to measure gearing. So we can simply measure gearing as fixed cost capital divided by total capital. Fixed cost capital, as I just explained, is the total of non-current liability and preference share, a capital which requires a fixed cost annual interest payment or dividend payment over total capital. Total capital is all money raised. That is equity, which is this part, plus the fixed cost capital. So total capital, and that's your fixed cost capital. This measures the gearing for a company multiplied by 100. Now we can end up in the situation. We can have our gearing to be greater than 50%. We can have our gearing to be less than 50% and we can have gearing to be exactly 50%. So we will start calling a company which has gearing greater than 50% to be highly geared. That's a high gearing company. It means that out of the total capital raise more than 50% is your fixed cost capital, a capital which will have to be repaid. So we can say this company has high borrowing, there is high debt, and obviously that means higher financial risk. So for a company, if more than 50% of the capital has to be repaid sometime in the future, that should be a cause of concern for ordinary shareholders. But on the other hand, if the company has gearing less than 50%, we will call that company to have low gearing, which means this company has low borrowing, there is low debt, and the risk is also low. So when we talk about a low geared firm, that means the shareholders are safe, but you also have to look at the opportunity cost. If the company has low debt, it's not borrowing much, then it can also probably lead to a situation where the company is not investing much, it is not expanding, because usually when companies expand, they would want to raise money through fixed cost capital and not give up more as ordinary share because that would lead to dilution of control. That's also permanent capital. So low geared companies have financial flexibility to raise additional debt, but that could also be that they might be giving up on certain investment situations, which will increase returns for the shareholders in the long run. So we always have to look both ways. Is the company low geared because it's keeping financial flexibility 
and missing out on investment opportunity or does the company operate with low risk because there isn't any investment opportunity out there that's the profile that shareholders would want to maintain and that's also the industry nature so it's always to see the context of the industry and the firm in this situation for a company with 50% gearing we call that to be neutral over here that means that their borrowing is medium debt is also medium and their risk is also medium so whenever calculating gearing make sure you guys compare it as greater than 50% less than 50 and equal to 50% okay now the next thing we should discuss is how can a company reduce gearing or how the how the company can increase gearing so if a company is highly geared the financial risk is high and you would be asked to advise how to reduce gearing the company can issue new ordinary shares so when new ordinary shares come in the denominator will increase and the gearing will go down the company can redeem debentures so the company can start paying off debentures or their loans in order to reduce the fixed cost capital included in the firm as of right now or the company can also start to retain profits so if your profits go up the equity portion will increase which is your permanent capital and as a result the debentures will go down so if the company does not distribute its profits at, as dividends you can expect your equity to go up that will also help you in reducing your gearing but if a company has low gearing on the other hand to increase gearing will be to issue new debentures or loans the company can also buy back ordinary shares so very often what companies do is if they have excess cash they would go out and buy back shares from the shareholders to reduce the shareholding amount reduce the equity amount that can also help you increase your gearing they can issue new preference shares to raise money in this situation preference shares gives us that advantage that it's again a fixed cost capital that can always be repaid back and does not become a permanent capital all right now the next impact gearing creates is on the income so when a company finances itself with fixed cost capital we just discussed a portion of the profit is given out as interest so we measure that through income gearing what income gearing does is so the negative implication of gearing is obviously that when a firm earns its profit a portion of that will be taken over for finance cost or debt servicing right so that's the profit that you have to give away to the financiers who are your fixed cost capital and not the real owners of the company so to calculate income gearing what we do is we compare the interest expense that is paid out of your operating profit remember profit before interest and tax is your operating profit so what percent of the operating profit has gone towards debt servicing because that's the profit that does not go to ordinary shareholders because they have to service their debt or fixed cost capital first and then the residual will go to them once they've paid the tax as well right so the second ratio that we will calculate with gearing is impact on your profit through the income gearing ratio okay so now let me apply these two concepts with an example in the following slide okay so over here they've given us a company that's the total assets 8025000 is common that's their equity they have 3 million shares over here each share is worth 0 0.5 that's 1500000 is their ordinary share capital they have share premium and retained earnings they also have this non current liability let me highlight that that's your debenture which is your fixed cost capital it comes with a fixed cost interest and has to be repaid and trade payables now using this if i ask you guys to calculate the gearing for this company how would we do that let me show it over here yeah so we would say that the fixed cost capital is only this debenture 2935 that has to be repaid over total capital total capital would be your debenture that's one more and your equity that's also part of your capital so equity is your permanent capital that's your fixed cost capital so fixed cost capital over total capital into 100 that's 39.2 percent that's the gearing of this company so what i can say is out of this company's total financing 
39.2% is borrowed capital, the capital they will have to repay back. And the rest, 60% roughly, becomes your permanent capital, which will stay with the firm. So what would this be? This is a low geared firm. We can say that's a low geared firm. They still have room to borrow more because any firm above 50% is considered highly geared. Okay, now after looking at the gearing impact, now let's see what's the impact on the income statement of this company. So let me show the income statement as well. All right, that's their summarized income statement. What are the figures that I should highlight? That's their operating profit after paying all their expenses, trading expense and other operating expense, 1580000 or 1.58 million is their operating profit. And how much goes towards finance costs? 235,000 is their finance cost. Now, can we calculate the income gearing for this firm? So if we calculate that now, I can say the income gearing for this firm will be 14.87%. 235,000 out of 1580,000 goes towards your fixed cost capital or your finance cost. So 14.87% of the operating profit goes towards finance cost and that does not go to the ordinary shareholders. The remainder then goes to ordinary shareholders uh, given there is no corporate tax over here. So that's it for gearing. The purpose of this video again was to understand the or measure the ability of a firm to pay its long-term obligation through the gearing ratio and the income gearing ratio.